Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for the Western Civilization Information Session at University of Queensland. Now, whether you're a career advisor or a current high school student, you may be a parent, uh, this is going to be a super useful information session for you if you are interested in studying Western Civilization at UQ. But you're also going to be learning a lot about the scholarship available for the UQ Ramsey Undergraduate Scholarships. Uh, we are lucky enough today to have Professor Alastair Blanchard with us today, Director of the Centre for Western Civilization and also the Paul Elitis Professor of Classics in Ancient History. So Alastair will be providing a bit of the program information as well as discussing the scholarships. We are also fortunate to have um, Zanea, current student studying uh, Bachelor of Humanities dual, uh, Law dual degree um, as well to give that student perspective. So before we do kick off, uh, if you do have any questions throughout, please use the Q&A function just at the bottom of your screen and we'll endeavour to get those answered for you throughout the session. Uh, a very quick reminder too, if you do have to run off um, halfway through the session, this session will be being recorded. Uh, so everyone who has registered will receive that link to rewatch. So um, enjoy the session. Without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Professor Alastair Blanchard. Thanks, Alastair. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Jaden, for that uh, uh, introduction. Um, so welcome to this uh, information session about the Western Civilization Program at UQ uh, and uh, the UQ Ramsey Undergraduate Scholarships. Uh, as Jaden mentioned, uh, I'm the uh, Paul Alice Professor of Classics and Ancient History here at the University of Queensland, and I also direct uh, the Centre for Western Civilization. Um, uh, I'd like to start uh, by um, uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet today. Um, I normally uh, live and uh, work on the lands of the Turrbal and Yagara people, but in fact, I'm actually coming to you today uh, from uh, the lands of the Gadigal people of the Aora Nation down uh, in New South Wales. Um, I'd like to, as I say, repay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, um, and, and also, of course, to welcome and acknowledge any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples uh, who are joining us in the chat room uh, today. So uh, the Western Civilization program uh, is offered via uh, two distinct pathways. Uh, so if you want to come and study uh, Western Civ here at UQ, you can do it either as part of the uh, Bachelor of Advanced Humanities degree, uh, which is a four year program that is focused specifically and exclusively on humanities subjects and contains within it an extended major uh, in Western civilization. Um, and the entry score for that based on last year was an entry score of around 96 uh, uh, ATAR. Um, and uh, essentially uh, there's no specific uh, subject prerequisites other than uh, just uh, completing a senior certificate. But uh, um, it's a four, uh, a four year program uh, and you'd be uh, very welcome to take that. Um, the other option that's available to you is if you wanted to pair it with law. Uh, and if you want to pair the uh, degree with law, uh, then uh, we have a dual program, which is a five year program. Uh, it's a combination of the uh, Bachelor of uh, Humanities with a focus in Western Civilization and the Bachelor of Laws uh, with honors. Uh, slightly higher ATAR entry for that. That's a last year a very competitive program. Uh, the ATAR entry was in fact 99.25 uh, for uh, for that, a five year uh, five year degree. Now, obviously, those ATARs were based on last year's entry. You know, it's a competitive program, and so those uh, ATAR scores, uh, you know, uh, may be adjusted for uh, going into going into next year. But let's talk about what you study in the program. So our program is a pretty unique form of program. So it's based on um, a program that is very familiar to people in the United States, um, but less familiar here in the Australian higher education system, which is what we call a great books program. So this is a program that is offered at places like Columbia University. In fact, it's um, the you know, famous uh, at Columbia University in New York um, for the Columbia Corps is kind of regarded as one of the sort of highlights of that university, but also places like the University of Chicago, Yale, Princeton, all offer variants of what we call great books programs, uh, as well as numerous US liberal arts colleges, um, St. John's Annapolis, uh, most famously. And what distinguishes a great books program 
is that it's a it's a program of reading which is not bound by any particular discipline. Uh, so normally, you know, when you come to uh, the university and to study humanities, you're normally stuck in a kind of silo of one particular discipline, right? So it might be history, it might be philosophy, it might be art history, it might be drama, it might be English literature. Um, what distinguishes great books programs is that you read across all of those uh, different uh, genres uh, and different different traditions and different disciplines. So you might, and, and sometimes within the same subject as well. So you might, for example, be studying Western political thought. And to do that, you might look at a piece of political philosophy, but you might also look at a, a dramatic work that explores uh, political ideas. You might look at an artwork, which is also doing that. So it's the way in which the kind of all these different perspectives and different traditions are brought together around a particular, uh, particular subject. Um, so that's what distinguishes a, a great books program, is it's based on the reading of kind of what we regard as kind of key canonical central works uh, to, uh, to the Western uh, to the Western tradition. Um, you'd be familiar with uh, num many of the names. It's people like Shakespeare, it's people like Jane Austen, it's people like Virginia Woolf, it's Sophocles, it's Thucydides. Um, it's all the kind of great, uh, uh, the great names. Now, when we are putting together a uh, list of texts that we wanted you to read over the course of your four years or five years, depending on which program you do, uh, we had very specific goals in mind. So we were choosing texts that we felt were um, texts that were important for you to read because they'd had a great impact on the world. So these were texts that had really kind of changed the world when they emerged. But also, more importantly than that, we also thought that these were texts which not only had changed their moment um, when they appeared, but also that they were texts which spoke to contemporary issues. Uh, that is to say that this, these were the kinds of texts that would give you a kind of toolkit for tackling some of the kind of wicked problems that the world is currently facing, whether it's geopolitical problems, whether it's environmental problems, whether it's social problems, that these were texts that actually had some real practical use, that they weren't just historical kind of facts, um, but were in fact actually really kind of useful texts for kind of going, going forward. So, so let me give you a, a, an example from my area, right? So I work in the ancient world, the ancient Greeks and Romans. Um, and so one of the texts that, for example, we look at is um, a, a text by a Greek historian uh, called Thucydides, who writes this extraordinary historical account of the great war between Athens and Sparta, uh, the two great powers in Greece of, its, of, of his day. Now, what's interesting is that Thucydides analyzes why it is these two great powers got into conflict. And many political theorists have turned to Thucydides and said, look, actually, that's a really good way of thinking through how great powers kind of get into conflict. Um, and it's, in fact, a really good model for actually thinking about you know, how, for example, US and China seem to have entangled themselves uh, in a kind of great rivalry as well. So, so even though the text is written about you know, thousands of years ago about a conflict that's you know, Athens and Sparta, it nevertheless has real applicability. Uh, in thinking through contemporary issues. And so that's how we kind of put these texts together. We think that it's a text that would be useful for going forward as well as looking backwards. Um, the other thing that's, I think, very distinctive about our program um, is that we also offer surveys of Western art uh, and Western music. Uh, so particularly, and these are designed particularly if you've got no experience in art history or musicology, right? So if you haven't done um, any art history before, if you've never, you know, picked up an instrument or had a, you know, an interest in music before, then what we offer you is the opportunity, they're not compulsory courses, they're elective courses, but we offer the opportunity for you to get your head around um, the great traditions of art and the great traditions of music. Uh, and th these are really a wonderful opportunity. So if you ever wanted to get your head around music, you know, now this is the, uh, uh, the course for you. And as I say, specifically designed for people with no background whatsoever. So you don't even have to be able to read a piece of music uh, um, uh, to, uh, to, to do the, the, music, uh, the music course. Um, so, so these are, as I say, really very distinctive things that we offer in the, in the program. Um, here's a, a list of some of the courses that we offer to give you a, a sense of what, what we've put together. So um, in the first uh, week we do, uh, sorry, the first uh, year you would do um, the classical world with me and we'd look at you know, Homer's 
Odyssey, we'll look at Plato's Symposium, we'll look at Ovid's Metamorphoses, you know, wonderful works of drama from the Greeks and Romans. And, and then the second semester, you'd do uh, a course in Jewish and Christian works, which would be uh, both a kind of uh, a few sort of biblical texts, but also texts which have responded to, to biblical works. So things like Dante's Divine Comedy or, um, or Primo Levi or Hannah Arendt or, or Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress to kind of get a sense of just how these texts have had a, an important, uh, important influence. Um, in the second year, you do courses around things like European Enlightenment uh, and Empire and its critics. And both of these courses look at what are regarded as one of the sort of uh, the contributions that the Western uh, civilization has made, but they also cast a critical eye on that as well. Uh, so they ask you to reflect on what precisely has been the legacy. Uh, of Western empires, you know, um, and it doesn't shy away from that. The fact that it's a very mixed, uh, a mixed legacy. Um, we also have courses on uh, women's writing uh, and uh, um, and the the, and the, the 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 exploration of female perspectives in, in the West, um, as well as courses that ask you to think about the kind of the notion of the West as well. You know, how useful is it? Uh, has it been in the past? Do you think it's going to be useful as an idea going forward? So, it's, so those are some of the compulsory courses uh, that we offer. We also offer, in addition to those compulsory courses, a whole series of elective courses as well. So courses on Shakespeare, courses on music, courses on art, courses on Western political thought. Um, two courses that are possibly worth uh, just uh, pulling out for you are, are two courses, The Rule of Law and Rights and Freedoms. Uh, and these are courses which are specifically designed for students um, to kind of complement legal studies. Uh, so they um, explore the kinds of sort of theoretical background to law, which in fact there isn't space to do in the law degree. Uh, and uh, in fact, the law program was very excited when we offered uh, these particular courses because they said, look, it's the kind of courses we would love to offer in the law degree, but we just don't have space. Uh, and so, so it's, again, an opportunity to kind of explore uh, different kinds of concepts uh, and, and ideas. And, and I say that those courses are also available to non-law students as well uh, and and you know if you ever wanted to think about what does justice mean or how does our legal system kind of operate and what are the principles that animate it then those are the courses uh, uh, for you so you know it's a really rich perspective um, various different kinds of ideas all all playing out there now in addition to the the, the, the program that we offer we also offer a number of very generous scholarships to support students to study uh, this program, probably amongst the most generous scholarships available uh, in Australia today. So those scholarships are currently valued at around $32,000 uh, a year. Uh, and uh, that's uh, $32,000 that you can effectively uh, spend uh, uh, however you want, really. And, you know, they're designed to support your uh, your studies, you could use them to uh, pay off your hex, uh, you can uh, use them to uh, support your, your, yourself. Uh, you know, if you're a regional student and want to move to Brisbane, you know, there, it's a great opportunity uh, uh, for you to, uh, to, to move to Brisbane without any kind of financial, uh, financial cost. In addition to that, and this is like, again, I think a really lovely aspect of the program, is that the, it also includes a scholarship uh, for an economy airfare to allow you to take up an international opportunity. So um, both programs, whether you're studying the uh, Bachelor of uh, Humanities, Advanced Humanities, um, or the Dual with Law, both have opportunities in them for you to go on exchange to uh, a, 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 a university overseas. Now, we have a huge number of partner universities in practically every kind of continent or country that you might want to visit. Uh, and, you know, if you want to take up that exchange opportunity, then by all means, we're very happy to help you with it. And your scholarship would also cover your airfare for you to take up that opportunity and gain a bit of a sort of international perspective. Uh, I think everyone who's taken up an international exchange has really um, raved about what a fantastic time uh, they, they've had and how much it's kind of enriched uh, their degree and you know it's great now that you know uh, uh, we're kind of moving into a post-pandemic phase that we're able to to travel uh, more and more 
Now, in terms of eligibility for the scholarships, um, that you uh, need to be either an Australian citizen or an Australian permanent resident uh, at the time of application. Um, and it's worthwhile noting here that actually, um, if you're a New Zealand citizen on a 444 visa, you're actually not eligible uh, for, uh, for these scholarships, I'm afraid. So it's really only um, Australian citizens or Australian permanent residents uh, at time of application. You need to have completed uh, the year 12 in either the year that you're applying or the, the previous year. Um, and this is particularly useful to know if you're planning a gap year. Um, you know, now that now that travel is again possible, we know more and more people are thinking about gap years. Um, if you are thinking about a gap year, then the year that you apply for the scholarship is just before you would start the degree. So it's after effectively you've had your gap year. Um, uh, so uh, you know, that would be your application date. Um, the only thing, and if, if you're thinking about taking a gap year, is you need to be a little bit careful about what you do during your gap year here uh, because you shouldn't try and do any other kind of university degree or study um, prior to uh, taking up the um, uh, taking up the scholarship so uh, so just be a little bit careful about how you plan your gap year we're very happy to advise you about that so if you have any questions about you know what I'm doing with my gap year will that make me ineligible uh, for the scholarship uh, there'll be a contact email at the end of this presentation and that will uh, give you all the information that you need to uh, to and we can talk you about talk you through uh, talk you through that um, you know Provided you're either a year, year 12 student and Australian citizen, if you're offered a place uh, in the Western Civ program, uh, then you're eligible to take up the scholarship. Um, and I, I think I should stress that, that you have to be offered a place in the program. So the, the scholarship uh, process uh, operates independently from the admissions process. Uh, so we will make our decisions in relation to uh, scholarship uh, um, uh, scholarship applicants um, a couple of months before, in fact, uh, QTAC will advise you whether you've got a place in the program. So if we make, so we will only ever make a sort of provisional offer uh, of a scholarship, uh, and then you know if you get a, a place in the program, then you can uh, transfer that to a to a full uh, to a full scholarship. Um, in terms of thinking about how. Uh, we're choosing our scholars, really that there are three uh, main criteria that we're using to, uh, to select our scholars. Uh, so the first one and, and the really important one is academic excellence. You know, we want uh, you know, the bright students uh, who, um, who can really um, take full advantage of the, of the program. Um, but it should be said there that with our current um, ATAR entries, you know, really, uh, you know, we are already getting the, the, the brightest of the bright students into the program. So don't feel that you have to, as it were, be getting, you know, ATARs of 99 or, or above uh, to, be, to, to be eligible for a scholarship. I think, you know, if you're tracking with a, an ATAR for 96, um, you meet the, uh, the academic excellence uh, criteria um, without any without any problems. Uh, so so you know don't feel that you have to be you know well above the ATAR entry scores to be uh, to be selected for the program. Um, we're also interested in uh, your community service. Uh, and we're after you know people who can um, indicate to us how they are making a difference in their communities. Uh, and that really uh, is dependent very much on what opportunities are available to you. So don't feel that you have to have had the most amazing kind of community service record in order to apply for the scholarships. We're very conscious that everyone has different opportunities in their life um, and that we, will, that we will take that on board when we're assessing uh, the community uh, service application. So, you know, if you're you know, just kind of just making your own small independent school community better, then that's absolutely, absolutely fine. But what we're interested in is people who are genuinely interested in making the world around them and those people that they interact with a better place. And if you can demonstrate that to us, then we would love to give you a, a scholarship. And the final thing is what we call suitability for program. 
And there, what we're interested in is why are you interested in the program, but also what you might be doing with the program in the future. Uh, how does this fit into your life plan? You know, now, you know, we're not expecting you to have your life plan sorted out. And if, you, if you've got your life plan sorted out, well, congratulations. That's fantastic uh, or wonderful to do that. If you have no idea what you want to do in the, in the future, that's totally fine as well. But we'd be very interested to hear about how you see the Western Civ program fitting into, uh, fitting into uh, your, uh, your opportunities. So those are the kind of main criteria that we'll be uh, that we'll be looking at. Um, in terms of the actual nitty gritty of the application process itself, um, well, essentially that there, there are uh, basically three kinds of documents uh, that we will that we will look for, um, and that you'll need to upload onto the uh, the scholarship application portal. Uh, so the first one is uh, a CV. Uh, and this is just a basic CV, one or two pages. Um, please, no more than uh, no more than two pages. Just outlining, you know, the things that you've done, the your educational background, the uh, you know what, what you, any extracurricular activities that you're involved in, any kind of interests that you might uh, that you might have. Um, and then uh, the second thing that you'll need to uh, fill in on in the on the. Uh, portal um, are statements uh, addressing the uh, the selection criteria. Now these are short statements, only about 250 words, so we're, we're not uh, demanding huge great essays uh, from you. In fact, the more succinct you can be, the, the better. Um, for the academic statement, um, you know, tell us a bit about your academic uh, uh, achievements. In particular, you know, give us as much information as you can about your what positions you are in terms of your class, you know, any subjects you're particularly uh, excelling in, whether you've had any academic awards, you know, and those are either uh, academic awards awarded by your school, or if you've uh, competed in any uh, competition you know, the Queensland History Teachers Association essay competition or uh, those sorts of things. Uh, tell us a bit about, uh, tell us a bit about that. Uh, or, you know, performance in, you know, uh, quasi-academic uh, activities as well. Things like debating, for example, would be something we'd be very interested uh, in hearing about. Um, and then uh, a statement on community service. Uh, and uh, uh, again, as I say, this is always uh, assessed very relative uh, to opportunity, but tell us about your community and how you're making your community better. Uh, and then finally, as I say, a, a short statement about the fitness for program and how does this degree uh, fit uh, into your uh, into your life uh, life goals. Uh, we also ask for two uh, references. Uh, as well to be uh, attached. Uh, and these uh, should be from teachers uh, at your school or people who perhaps have very close connections with you in terms of maybe your community service. Um, they're not character references. I think that's really important to stress uh, is that these aren't, as it were, um, people who are telling us about what your kind of character is. So they're not kind of, and so it's not particular kind of family friends or um, people who know who've known you for a long time rather what we're interested in is people who can attest to your academic ability and and as i say the best people for that are your teachers who can talk us a bit about the school that you're at tell us a bit about um uh, what your um uh, what position you've had in the school and and uh, give us a bit of a more sense of uh sense of you so those those two referees are really ideally uh from uh from uh from your from your teachers um in terms of the time frame, so uh, the applications open uh, on the 12th of June, uh, uh, and so very shortly, uh, and then they close uh, at midnight on the 30th of July. Now that is midnight, but um, please don't leave it till midnight. Uh, um, there, there are various bits you need to upload, so please try and uh, uh, tr please try and complete your application at least a few days before it. But especially because if there are problems, then we can. And um, we're very happy to help you uh, get you get the material together and make sure it's uploaded and your application is uh, is all uh, correct. Uh, so once we've got all those applications, we'll then be uh, uh, assessing those applications. And then uh, around 
um, between sometime like the 6th to 8th of September, we'll be letting you know whether you've uh, progressed to the next uh, stage of the application process, uh, which is a short, um, imp uh, short uh, interview, um, which will be with the selection panel. Uh, those interviews are held over Zoom. Uh, and uh, so there, there'll be a, a Zoom interview with uh, various members of the selection panel. And can I just stress, and I really want to stress this a lot, this is designed to be as relaxed as possible in terms of an interview. You know, this is really an opportunity for us to get a bit of a sense of you as a person, to put a bit more flesh onto the application. There are no trick questions. It's not a, an interrogation or anything like that. It's really just a, an opportunity for the selection panel to know, to get to know you um, uh, a bit better. Uh, and uh, and you know, we will we, conduct those over a, a number a, a number of days. Um, and then um, we make our decisions. And you should then know by the 30th of October whether you've got a conditional offer um, uh, or um, you've been placed on a wait list or you've been unsuccessful in your application. Now, again, can I just stress that all offers of scholarship are conditional and they're conditional on you being admitted to the program, uh, which will be uh, determined uh, by QTAC. And that happens around mid-January. Uh, so QTAC will uh, do all the uh, offers and uh, uh, admissions process. So you'll find out in mid-January whether you've got a place in the program. So if you've got a conditional offer for a scholarship and you've got a, um, and, uh, a, a, a program uh, and, and you've been admitted to the program, then you'll get a, 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 full, uh, a, full, a full scholarship. Um, so look, that's the, that's the time frame. Uh, that's hopefully given you um, uh, a bit of a sense about the program itself. Now, um, what I thought would be kind of nice at this point would be to hand over to, in fact, one of our current scholars uh, who uh, is currently studying the program, been through the process and, and uh, uh, is able to uh, able to share her experience with you. Um, so at this point, I'm going to hand over uh, to Zenia Giska, who uh, is going to tell us a bit about what it was like for her to apply for the program and what she's thinking about uh, in terms of the program uh, itself. So Giska, uh, Zenia, over to you. Thank you, Alistair, for having me, and thank you for letting me speak today. Um, so studying Western civilization alongside a Bachelor of Laws has been a very fulfilling and rich experience for me. I think that if you enjoy reading and you appreciate literature in general, then this is a fantastic pathway for you, whether it is just Western civilization or whether you combine it with a law degree. I find that I get a really good balance between the structure and rigorous law subjects, but then more creative and abstract and intellectually stimulating Western Civ courses. Um, so Western civilization as a course, as Alistair already mentioned before, is extremely versatile. There is an emphasis on literary works, but the courses branch out to a variety of disciplines. So one of my favorite electives so far was Icons of Western Art, where we looked at art that made the West from Egyptian hieroglyphs and statues to modern art, which I guess gave like a really comprehensive overview of like Western art history and what defines Western art. Um, what I appreciate in particular is the variety of perspectives that the coursework presents. You are never really bound by a single viewpoint or an ideology, and there is a genuine commitment being made to expanding the perspective beyond the purely Western perception. Um, West as a concept itself is actually inherently relative. If you have a West, it, you also must have the East and understanding the difference between the two truly allows us to understand the West. It is kind of values and ideas such as these underpinning every single course that you do that I believe make Western civilization not just a single history, philosophy or a literature course. It makes it a cohesive and comprehensive endeavor of understanding the West. So in my experience applying for the scholarship, um, both in the written and the interview process, it was clear that what was expected of me was to show that I genuinely care for my community, that I genuinely am interested in Western civilization as a discipline, and that I will use this opportunity to create and amplify a positive impact on my community. Um, I remember actually being incredibly nervous before my interview, like my palms were sweaty, I was a little bit shaky, you know, the whole package before the interview, but um, as soon as I hopped onto the Zoom call and after a few minutes, all this nervousness was kind of went away, 
all I saw that um, they wanted to genuinely see, to understand me and my aspirations, what motivates me and where I see myself in the future and how Western civilization as a degree fits into all of this and what will, it will enable me to do in the future. I would also like to sincerely emphasize, as Alistair already said, that in looking at your extracurricular, how much you have done will always be considered relative to your opportunity, right? So your achievements and community involvement, say as a rural student or as a state school student, will never be compared to achievements of private school or urban students, because let's be honest, there still exists an enormous gap in opportunity. Your achievements as a and community involvement, say as a rural student or as a state school student, um, yeah, so, so it, it will never be compared in such a way that it will be unfair. Um, so as a regional student myself from Townsville, Queensland, um, my experience in applying for the scholarship, I re really felt re at home in the Western Civilization program. Um, I have never felt like my achievements were unfairly compared to other students who have, may have received more of this opportunity. And we have such a wide variety of students with radically different interests from radically different backgrounds. I have quite a few friends from Toowoomba. I know another girl from Townsville. And some people even come out of state to study at University of Queensland, this particular degree. And our interests are also radically different. Some people love drama and performing arts. Some people have an inclination towards philosophy and debating. And some people just really love literature. But what really unites us is our genuine interest for Western civilization. And I think that's something that's really special, especially from a degree as small a Western civilization that is so focused on this like one particular topic. Um, with all of that being said, my advice for applying for the scholarship is this. Don't be intimidated to apply. Most people underestimate uh, how special and important their achievements are and the hard work and countless hours that they poured into getting to where they are today. Show that you're a hard worker, show that you are genuinely passionate about Western civilization as a field of study, and show that you will make a positive difference if you're given the right opportunity. And I think that's all I wanted to say for today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Xenia. Very lovely to ha have you. And thank you for for uh, for to giving up some time to to chat to us. I'm sure uh, everyone will have found that extraordinarily useful and and you know uh, and a perspective uh, uh, on the, on the course. Um, so I guess the the next thing to do is just talk about uh, the application process and how how it all works. And uh, in particular, one thing I would like to stress is we have this very helpful application guide. Uh, and uh, um, that is really something that you should uh, um, get access to. Um, I, I know a number have gone out to uh, to various schools. Um, if you haven't got access to one, we can certainly either mail you or, or email you one. Um, and you'll see on the uh, on the slide there the um, uh, the email address uh, for us. So this is um, uh, an email address that you know will get to us if uh, for any kinds of queries. So um, if you want if you want us uh, to send you a guide, just drop us a line. If you have any technical questions that we haven't been able to answer either in today's chat or um, uh, in the Q and A session, or even sort of after the the Zoom session happens, and you suddenly think, oh, hang on, I, I'm, I wasn't quite clear uh, about what was being said, or I just like a bit more uh, clarification on a particular issue, or as you're putting together your application, you you have some queries. Look, please get in touch because uh, we're keen to assist you to make you know, the best application possible for um, uh, for our scholarships uh, and to uh, get the um, the best students into our program. We, we, we love uh, teaching into this program. It's a really exciting, dynamic uh, program, uh, and we really want to make the opportunity uh, available to anyone uh, who, who'd like to take it up. So um, please do do get in uh, to uh, get in touch and we'll be very happy to uh, to talk you through uh, the application, uh, the application process. Um, so I think that's everything that I wanted to say uh, today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this uh, for this little information session.
please do follow up with uh, any questions. Uh, we will stay online for a couple of more minutes in case people want to type things into the Q and A uh, session in the Q and A box. So um, if you've got any sort of final questions, please uh, fire them uh, fire them in, and we'll make sure that we get an answer to you. But as I say, if there are any things that you would like um, uh, further clarification on, uh, just drop, drop us a line in the email. Very happy uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to be in touch. So um, thank you very much for joining us uh, today and uh, um, I'll let you enjoy the, the rest of the day. So um, uh, goodbye from me and um, hope to see you in the programme.